What is up, everybody? It is Blue Beachy here. Gabe made me say that. <laughs> and we have arrived in the beautiful Florida Keys. Check out that view. We had a long seven hour drive to get here. Um, we packed up the contender this morning, um, packed up all of our clothes, and headed south. Jake, Tarzan, and Gabe are all on the boat. Me and Luke decided to come on in and check out our room here. We are at the Marriott Beachside Resort here in Key West. So we're about to take a look at the room really quick. Pretty big. Oh my goodness. There's a room right It there. smells good even. We got, we got a room right here. Not just the nice. That looks comfy. Wow. Another big bedroom. It's Holy cow. Giant. Oh my gosh. Look at that tub. Dang. Oh, the throne. <laughs> Check it out, that's a huge bathtub. Huge bed. We even have a balcony. Wait, it has jets A on nice that kitchen. Floor. It has wow. jets in it. Nice. Can you open this door? Let's see what the balcony looks like. Oh my goodness, view to the pool. The ocean's out there. I don't know what this is. Oh my goodness. They have a second room. Oh, daddy, they got another Holy cow. We have a penthouse. Nice. Look at that view. It looks like they're getting ready for a wedding down here. We just saw a bunch of people all dressed up, looking snazzy. We're gonna have a lot of fun in this pool too. That is really cool. Look at that view. So we've had two somewhat unfortunate events these past few weeks. Uh, for one, we had to leave the Bahamas a little bit early. I was really sad and upset about that because we were having a great time fishing and we were pulling in fish after fish. Um, but we had to leave a little bit early due to weather. So that really stunk. And the second issue was the boys' passport didn't come in in time to take them to the Panama trip, which is coming up next week. So it is Father's Day weekend this weekend. I know there's nothing more that these boys would rather do than to go fishing with their dad and me too. <laughs> so we made it happen. We're here in the Florida Keys, gonna do a lot of fishing this week, spear fishing, deep dropping, playing in the pool, eating good food. We are just gonna have a ball and we're all really, really excited about that. We might get in the pool today. Yeah, it actually sounds good right now, doesn't it? Yes. That was a long drive down here. It took us a good probably seven hours because we were pulling the contender and that's no joke and Gabe stresses the whole time. So it's not, <laughs> it's not fun at all. Thankfully, there was no blowouts, no issues this time. Um, like I said, the boys are getting the boat fueled up right now. We'll probably take it kind of easy this afternoon. Um, we'll bring our luggage up. Maybe I'll put Luke to work here in a second and him and I will go pull the luggage up. And then we're going to do our first big fishing venture tomorrow morning. <laughs> Jumping fences. Here, hold my phone for me, Luke. It's not illegal. It's just harder, not smarter. I mean, smarter, not harder. <laughs> All right, let's go see. Look who made it. Hi, pretty girls. What's up, guys? Y'all made it. Yeah. What's up, buddy? You are on, on a camp right up. now, and, and Robert Spotswood is <laughs> not running from the camera. Get over here. Get over here. You guys, this is this man's hometown. He lives just not far over here. This, as you know, is the Marriott Beachside. Tell us about this cool pontoon boat. I'd say uh, 
40 passenger catamaran that we started running some trips. Uh, it goes from here to A&B Lobster House three times a day and then it goes to the sandbar. So I can go eat lobster and not have to drive? You can go eat lobster and have drinks and come back safely and then the next day you can hop on that and go to the sandbar and Dude, that's have a, a good lunch experience. I'm talking about, will they take the kids and babysit them for us? Of course. You guys, this place is absolute heaven. When you come down here to the Marriott beach side, you can park your car in that awesome parking garage and never get back in it again for a week, for two weeks, for a month. They have water taxis, just like he said. They have fishing charter captains right here. This place is legit. But right now I gotta figure out how to tie my boat up because I'm not used to this and I'm not scared to admit it. I never tie up like this, so I gotta do some concentrating. And just like that, folks, it's the next day and we are cocked, locked, and ready to rock. Look at Luke, the enthusiasm is real. He's not quite sure why we're up yet. Look at him. Luke, you gonna wake up yet? I'm waking up. It's a process. I'll tell you something about our crew. We're about the latest starting people on the planet. It's nine o'clock in the morning and my crew's not even woken up yet. So today we're gonna head about 45 miles straight west of Key West down to an area called the Marquesas. I've got Seymour maps hooked up. I've got my charts hooked up. I've got some memories of what I've done down there in the past and we're going to go spear fishing and fishing. Maybe even head offshore and try to catch some mahi or what we call dolphin here in South Florida. The weathermen, I'm telling you, I say it all the time. How do you get paid to do your job wrong? Every day. It was supposed to be zero wind and it's blowing about probably 15 to I would say 18 miles an hour straight out of the west. So. One thing about Key West is you got a lot of stuff to do. There's a lot of opportunities. We're getting after them right now. So right behind me is the tip of Key West, the farthest, most southern point in the United States. We just come around the corner. Now we got about a, I don't know, 45 mile run straight this way towards the Tortugas and the Marquesas and all of that. Crystal's all tucked in in her bean bag. The boys are up front. Well, that didn't take very long. We've got a flock of birds right here going crazy. And we actually didn't bring much bait with us. So I put a tuna feather out and Abram's already hooked up. It was just screaming line. So I turned the boat, went to him. Now we're gonna gain a bunch of line. Luke, are you awake yet? I'm awake. <laughs> I'm awake. Reel as fast as you can. Don't let him get any more slack. The bad thing is, is it started out already 200 yards behind the boat, so he's got a lot of reeling to do. Abram, you gonna give us some over-the-shoulder advice this morning? It's the real burn is happening right now. Well, you're lucky I give you one of these little things to soften the, the poke. Yeah, that's definitely helping a lot. Right when I hooked him, it was bad. Pump and reel. Now he's straight up and down. Come back here to the middle, right where Luke's at, so Jake's lower. Jake, you need to get the longer gaff. I'm going to try to turn the boat. Do you see him? Oh, no, I just got back. Oh, yeah, he's right there then. Oh, yep, I see him. I see him. Jake, the whole world's watching you gaff, so don't miss him. He might be able to just boat flip him. It's a tuna. Here comes the swivel. Don't real. Oh, that's a good tuna. Skipjack. Good one. Jake, let him get him up here. One more turn. Good job, Jake. Bring him right back here. Bring him back here. Y'all, everybody to the back. Let me see him. Hold him up. Skipjack tuna. So here's what we just caught him on. Literally that easy. Just a tuna skirt, put it way out the back. We might catch another one too, because those are super good eating and they're good for bait. Put him in that hatch. Just running along, obviously we found a bunch of weed, but right here's what you're looking for. It's a big knot of net with a buoy and it'll hold a bunch of bait. And we're hoping there's some mahi here. There's all kinds of bar jacks and ocean tallies. 
Normally I would pick some trash up like this, but that's too much for us to put in this boat. Jake, go bump it in reverse, just slightly. It'd be interesting to know where this came from. I'm surprised there's no triple tail on that. There might be, he's just hiding up underneath it. Ooh. Oh, dang. Set the hook, Ooh. set. Uh oh. Here. Oh. Go. Still got it? He still has it. Oh, yes. Oh, he's pulling so hard. Got him. He came Man, in Man, he's hot. feisty, huh? He came in hot. That might have been your fastest fish catch ever. What kind of fish is he? Just a little bar jack. All right, we got about 10 miles to go. We're headed in to try to grouper fish, yellowtail fish, and some other stuff. But in between here and there is open water, so we might end up finding some mahi mahi, aka dolphin, on the way. Golly, that is a big one. Look, I got one on your rod. Nice. Golly, yep. that thing's huge. Bring it up here so we don't lose him. That's a good eating fish. Golly, he's huge. No. Yep, normally, sea ocean tallies here. You got some, Jake? Dang, he's little. Jake's got a yellow tail. Good job. Hey, from you had him up. What happened? I don't know. I don't want to break him off. I have really light leader, but he just swam down to the bottom. I got a keeper yellow tail. This is when we need a hoop net, something to land him in. Yeah. Getting this gaff in there is going to be hard. Oh. Coming back up. Nice, oh, jolly. All right, folks, we are anchored up. We're in 100, about 109 foot of water. The current is absolutely screaming. We actually stopped offshore to try to deep drop, and there was too much current out there too. So we dropped down to a lot lighter leaders, and we're kind of just trying to figure this out. I was trying to make chum balls, but something in my equation's not working. It's not balling up like mud balls that you used to have fights with when you were young. So all we're doing is taking this little jig head with 10 pound test fluorocarbon and I'm throwing it up current and letting it free fall as fast as I can. They're eating it though before it even comes close to hitting the bottom so it, you've got to watch your line. If I had really good chum balls, this would be super easy, but my chum balls are exploding before they even get near the bottom. And they're not even making it 10 feet under. Oh, hooked up. You gotta baby these fish so much. That's a good size thing. He's bent. Yellowtail. These aren't huge, but they're getting bigger. You fry this sucker whole, and you got something. Jake's got one too. Nice little barely legal yellowtail. What do you got, Jake? I don't know. Yeah, you gotta be easy with these fish. Yellowtail. Swing him in. Here's the keeper. Nice. There you go. Gabe's got something big. Just changed up and Doubled up big things. Jake's got one too. Just trying to figure out what to do in this really bad current. I put a whole squid head on here. So, uh, yeah, it might be pretty big. I dropped down a pin fish on a three-way rig. I'll show you in just a second how I did it. You want to go for Not what I wanted, though. Wow. Nassau grouper. That's very yeah. illegal to keep in the United States. It's a big one though. Golly. Yeah. That pinfish wasn't down there very long. That is a absolutely stunning fish. Yeah. Oh, their gills are bad. Listen Here to him. He bit your shirt. Gosh, that's a beautiful fish. Sending him down. 
Jake, what, what did you, you get? get? I got a small yellow tail. Oh. Yes. Oh get him. Get him. Get him, Lake. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Yes. Get him up. You got it, buddy. You got it or do you want help? That boy's got it. This is what we've been training him for. Do you want to go to the pool? <laughs> get it, buddy. Oh, I don't give him slack like that. Oh. <laughs> oh, get is he getting his fish up? Yeah, he's getting whooped. <laughs> he's coming in. Show him his boss, Luke. Here, swing him over. Faster, son. Faster. He's a big and Oh, a blue runner. Oh no. Don't reel up anymore. Oh, got that weight. There you go. Woo! Just put the big boy down with a big live bait. What'd you throw out? A little pinfish? A little pinfish. Oh, that's because I And I'm hooked up to something oh, good size. So big. Why does your reel look like it doesn't have much line on it? It's way back there. And because I hooked a really big fish and he broke me off on a piling way out. What kind of fish was it? Uh, it was a big one. A manatee? Manatee. <laughs> you guys, he told, what'd you do? Foul hook it? Yeah, I was reeling in my bait um, at the inlet to cast out again and somehow it snagged it. And it wrapped around. There's a big slow speed sign out in Sebastian Inlet and it shot out there and broke me off. Fun fact, when I was gator hunting about eight years ago, a huge gator went down and I threw my snatch hook right where it went down and it ended up being a manatee. Oh, no. uh oh, we're all tangled up. Trigger. Oh, it's another. Another big trigger. Get the gaff, Jake. Let's see if Jake can gaff him. Oh, I got him. Oh, Luke's, Luke's got him a good one on. Oh my gosh, he's a big one. Get him, Luke. There we go. Got him in the boat. What did Luke get? A yellow tail. You caught that, Luke? <laughs> we're all sweating. We don't sweat. ever sweat, and we're all sweating. We need more chum. Our chum's about wore out. I think we're gonna go in early today and stock up. We were very unprepared today. I think we're gonna have a little change of sceneries in about two minutes. Pick up this boat, get it ready, and run and go look for something new. You had to hurry faster. Where was he? Well, he Straight, I'm straight in front of you. To a little bit to the left. Right. Oh, you're, you're straight. Oh, I see him. You got him. I got him. Cool. You guys, these are the coolest things ever. And probably the most prehistoric thing you'll ever see. <laughs> Look at that. Horseshoe crab. Here, boy. Here, boy. Jump right on top oh, of you. Look, <laughs> come on. Here, I'll hold your crab. You jump. Hand him here. I'll catch you. Come on. We got enough fish to eat. We've had enough fish to eat. We were just goofing off having a good time. And now we pulled up to what we call, so or what warm. is called, Boca Grande Island. Can I turn him loose, Luke? Hey, catch me. Alright, I'll catch you. Come on. Here, jump. One, two, three. Oops, I missed. My bad. Three, go! <laughs> what was that? That was the most uncoordinated dive I've ever seen in my life. Goodness! Listen. The splash went out of frame. It was so big. It's like two foot deep here. Did your butt hit? My butt hit hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys and girls. This is Boca Grande Island. Luke's up there exploring. Uh, a couple months ago, if you remember, when a lot of refugees from Cuba started coming over here, for some reason, this particular time, they started hitting the Marquesas, which is down here, and Boca Grande, and a couple more islands. They weren't making it to Key West. They were landing out here and unfortunately there's no food or water. There was nobody to get them. So they started airlifting water and food in by helicopter and then eventually were able to take them all to the mainland. That would have been crazy to leave Cuba, go a hundred miles by boat pretty much, not knowing if you would make it and then landing here. If you want to call it a boat. 
Yeah. It was barely a boat. That's for sure. Probably smaller than the SS Beachy. That just goes to show how thankful we should be to live in America because there's people that will get on, like she just said, a raft, not knowing if they're going to encounter storms, the current not being very strong, what they were going to encounter, leave their home knowing they could get in trouble if they got caught, and they might not make it here. The current could be super strong and they could end up missing Florida completely. It, God bless America, that's for sure. Just got done cleaning the cast net and here... Here comes the boys. They then caught something interesting. They, they dig holes in the sand and they live in them. They're really good bait for the beach. I've never seen one. It's not a mana shrimp, huh? Uh-uh. But they live in really deep holes in the sand. How'd you catch it? We dug right to where he, his hole started and they like come out to fix their hole and you can grab them. Let's go try to find another one. All right. Here, Ricky. Oh, no, he has big out of his hole. That's what we used for bait when I did the fishing. Let me hold it. Yeah. Don't squish him. The They're like the best bait in the world. Fruit. Surf fishing. I've never heard of such a thing. Crystal! Nice. That thing's big. Y'all check it out. Dankopliers.com. You cannot beat this. Check it out. Look here. All that for under. 50 bucks one bubble blades like 60 and I guarantee you if you use these you'll never use another bubble blade again dankopliers.com use promo code blue gabe and you'll save another 10 percent off in that color I, love I don't that really color. like white because they make them in a ton of different colors but the white one the last time I was in the Bahamas cleaning the trigger fish show them up there cut my hand I just feel the white is bad juju for me Right here, the seven inch pro series. You don't need another knife than this. The only reason I say get this is the other two are pretty much free. Y'all, the seven inch pro series. I don't have my cutting glove though. I feel naked without it. We're gonna start with him. This fish can be really, really tricky, but if you cut him in the right places, super easy. Notice I started on this fin. Now I can work my way to the hard spot. Just like that. What y'all doing? Oh, uh, I just changed. I didn't feel like being wet. I just been walking around wet. <laughs> How come you just... caught all the keeper fish? I don't know. I just I was just in He's the water just at the his next day. Time. All right, right here. I'm gonna come in right behind this fin. You're gonna have to use some pressure because they are tough. You really want to cut from the outside or from the inside out. A lot of people don't even target these fish, and they are incredible. Check that out. Now I will go to my nine inch, just because it's such a broad flick. Watch how easy this is. Look at that. Hogfish meat doesn't look any cleaner or better than that. That's beautiful. That is a chunker for sure. Probably, heck, that's 9, 18, 21 inches long. Much easier fish to clean. Like, super easy. That file fish or ocean tally will be better eating than that jumbo yellowtail. So here's a different way. Cut it right here. Right out the back. Nice. That easy. Now when you're chumming for yellowtails like we were, you don't really want to do it like that if you have a bunch because the gut content's nasty and will get all over the place. So once we get up in the room, we'll do a comparison on what the meat looks like. That ocean tally's better than this all day long. 
come in here. You want to cut just a little of that out as possible. Flip that around. Bada bing, bada bang. I'm making a dish today, tonight, that I've never made before on this channel. Jake's been craving it, so it's his birthday. Happy birthday oh, to oh, you. Oh, I forgot. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Well, well by the time they watch this video, it's going to be your birthday. My parents just got here. They're over at the pool with Lucky Duke. And that's Grandma's it. cooking a surprise. There you go. Oh, let me tell y'all something about Grandma. She's making something for her baby boy that I requested. We'll see y'all up in that beautiful room. Thank you to God for this day. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you for letting us go out on the boat, way offshore, and keeping us safe. Letting us catch this wonderful fish and make this wonderful food. Thank you for helping us have all this family together and for letting us be, be able to eat this dinner. Just stay be bright, amen. Amen. Like He's getting look. like shotgun. Yeah. He's letting it rip. All right, you guys, we were going to show you how to cook this amazing meal. You've never had my pasta. That's homemade pasta, Mom. It's I'm delicious. Yeah. All right, so this is the trigger fish, and that's the yellowtail. Give us your honest opinion. These kids are starving. Mom, eat. Look at them. They ain't even talking. For them three to be quiet, you know they're hungry. So this was... This was Jake's birthday dinner. This is what he requested. What do you have? Dad's got trigger fish or yellowtail? It's good. I don't know what you got. I know Tarzan has trigger fish. It's good. Better yep. than any other stuff I've had. Jake, nobody's going to steal that plate of food from you. Have you tried the two yet? They're both great. I don't know where to sit this because I like everything. They taste good to me. What about oh. this right here, though? That's Can all for him. I'll give Jake a little piece because it's his birthday, but... I don't know. We're going to be fine over that <laughs> one. Mango, mango cobbler. Mango Where does cobbler. mangoes come from? My tree. My front yard. Mom, you see how he says his tree? I think well, he that's okay. It's y'all's tree. The, Our boy, tree. the kids claim it. To climb it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Abram caught everything on this table except <laughs> for the broccoli and biscuits. It's true. <laughs> So all I did with the fish was put a little bit of coconut oil in the pan, some Lowry's oh, garlic salt water. and some sea salt and pan fried it. Thank you. The pasta is, mom, grab that thing up there, that jar, please. And what is that? That's terrible. <laughs> Dad, you grabbed the margarita. You weren't supposed to grab that one. <laughs> mom, that lemonade was spiked. You should have seen his face. <laughs> so the pasta is this right here. Just linguine with this, and I added sauteed mushrooms, peppers, and onions. It's very simple, very easy, and very cheap. An awesome way to spice up a dinner. You've got to cut portions big enough for all of us now. How many people are there? So Dad's got some fresh raw mango. It's good, isn't it? I wish y'all could have seen that. These two right here bicker and argue so much, Jake just randomly hit him in the head with a spoon for absolutely no reason. Dude, if you've never had mango, good mango, you're missing out. Abram? The heck with Abram. You forgot me. The heck with Abram. Tell him, Dad, seniors first. That's right. I want to see Beachy's face when she bites into that. I know what she's doing. She's fixing y'all that and she's going to take the pan. Yes. Let's see Beachy's reaction first. Tarzan, try it. You gotta try it, and then you gotta go Beachy. <laughs> Beachy! Okay. Holy cow. That's good, isn't it? Yeah, I have some good stuff. It's going good. Look, if you don't up, like it, you can just have some raw ones. He's eating it. It's just good. How'd you make it, Mom? A cup and a half of flour, a cup and a half of sugar, a cup and a half of milk, and a tablespoon of vanilla flavor. Mix them all together. I put a stick of butter in the pan in the oven at 350 degrees, and then I put it in, and then I put all of the fruit in on top of it, and just turn it, just leave it in there for like 45 minutes. Look at her, like y'all. She's mentally preparing Why are for this. <laughs> oh, look what you got. He's, He's over here eating, babe. I want to see your face. Dessert. Come on, babe. The whole world's waiting. I hope it's not I a disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> Is it good? 
Ten, ten, ten out, of, out of ten. Thanks. Is Crystal. it beachy approved? Beachy approved. Look, what are you looking for? He's a little sun fried. No, he, they're they're wanting to jack with each other right now for some odd reason. Well, good morning, Boo. Good morning. How do you like the Marriott Beachside? This this place is beautiful. Literally, this is not like what we normally do, guys. We don't normally come to resorts, but Listen, when in Key West, this is the fanciest place you've ever brought me. That's for sure. Yeah. I've been here a couple times and I can tell you guys, this resort isn't like most resorts that I've been to around the world. This one accommodates the fishermen, accommodates the tourists, and accommodates everybody. I mean, even the room inside, I have a desk to work at. You've got a nice little bar right there. You could have lunch. You got a beautiful pool, a beach. There was a wedding right there yesterday. It's centrally located. so right on the other side of that building is the main drag in key west it goes right around to duval street which is just over there about four or five miles this place is perfectly located down here in key west if you need gas in the boat just right around the corner is a yacht club you can fill your boat up get bait chum how do you beat this place you don't so if you follow along much and you watch our bahamian videos if you don't you better go back and watch them because they're really good but in one of those videos my good buddy rg made some pancakes and they were world famous I tried to mimic them this morning. They were really good, but I don't think they were as good. But Crystal just made me take the stairs down for exercise. What you got? I have the new Fitzgerald Fishing Stunner X Saltwater Edition. He gave that rod to me though, babe. I think it was both of us. But this is guaranteed to catch fish. You got that right. If you guys come here, this Marriott has everything. And one of the really cool things they offer is these nighttime kayak trips they are booked out a long ways though so if you want to do that you need to book in advance they've got offshore fishing boats which this dude right here spanked us yesterday he caught like 10 times the fish that we did that's embarrassing but it happened and they even have jet skis these kayaks have see-through bottoms and they're lit up and i actually filmed them right there last night it's pretty neat they only go at night obviously and they do a pretty big tour and everybody that i've talked to that's got off the kayaks loves them our good friends mike and marcy from sebring florida who we've done some hunting videos with in georgia are here to see us my parents are here and today we're sort of just doing the lazy slash get ready for tomorrow day because tomorrow we're taking those new fitzgerald fishing rods offshore to catch some big mahi and tuna it's always good when you wake up in the morning when your boat's been left in the water to see it floating. That'd be heartbreaking if that boat sank. Y'all catch anything? Y'all, here's the famous Marcy. Look, caught up on YouTube. And here's her real talkative husband, Mike Worley. What you doing? I'm passing y'all to go to the fishing. What? You can't catch nothing sitting down, son. I got my rod and my rod. Do you like that new Stunner X? Yeah. Fitzgerald? I lost a 100 pound tarpon on it. I caught a nurse shark with it. Last night you caught a nurse shark on it? Yeah. You well, used my rod before I even get to use it. It got, it rubbed on oh, the pole. I got it off the cooter right here. A giant barracudas? Look how big he is. Oh my, oh, my goodness. All right, that's it, folks. You went fishing with us all day yesterday. You had dinner with us. You got to see my beautiful face this morning, but right now this video is ending. We're gonna enjoy all the things this Marriott has to offer and just spend the day with family. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. But like Jake always says, it's time to get up out of here and get the heck out of shape. See y'all.